17,000 paying customers, paying on average four, five, six-ish bucks a month, again, to help streamline your wardrobe, not sell you more clothes, not anything like that, but to help you get more use and be more efficient with your current wardrobe. They've got a team that'll be about 15 by next week, up from six. They've raised an additional $1.2 million from just a year ago when they had 1.8 raised, so they have 3 million total raised, again, based in Cincinnati, helping you streamline your wardrobe. This is episode 709. Coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Alan and how his software company is now using $20 million to scale. This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Good morning, everybody. My guest today is Blake Smith. He is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Cladwell, a clothing company that doesn't sell clothing. His goal is to fight for sustainability and humane labor practices by enabling people to buy fewer but better clothes. In fact, we had him on, we were just talking about this about a year ago, where he had articulated that they've just that they'd passed eleven thousand five hundred customers. Each customer would pay on average call it six bucks a month. So they're doing about seventy grand in monthly recurring revenue about a year ago. They were at about five percent churn uh, monthly, spending about seventeen bucks to acquire a new customer. They're based in Cincinnati and uh, they had raised at that point about one point eight million bucks and did about a hundred grand in twenty fifteen revenue. Blake, are you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it, man. Thanks Are those numbers? You bet. Yeah. So that was about a year ago. Give us kind of a quick update. Where are we today in terms of maybe customers? Yeah. Um, I think we're at 17,000 right now. Um, That's great. And explain what people are buying for people that didn't hear the first episode. What are they getting? Yes. So Cladwell is an everyday styling app. Actually, this has changed a good bit since the last time you and I spoke. Everyday okay. styling app that literally dresses you from the clothes already in your closet every day that helps you achieve a minimal and interchangeable wardrobe over time. So mm -hmm. based on what you're wearing, what you're not wearing, we'll actually say, hey, you should maybe get rid of some items or keep these items or buy these types of items. Um, what's different about us is that we don't try to sell clothing to anybody. All we do is actually we work for the customer just dressing them every day. Um, and so with that, we can actually deliver minimalism, unlike a lot of other people who are maybe uh, have an incentive to try to get you to buy more. And what is the, so people go to cladwell.com. What's the onboarding funnel? They click download or they click buy or what? Yeah, uh, you go to cladwell.com and you click, uh, you would click buy. We're doing sign up right now through Stripe. And then once you do that, then you download the app. Um, you also can go straight to the app store and do it as well. Um, so we're kind of going both funnels, but obviously it's better for us when we do it through Stripe. And last time we spoke, you said kind of the average customer was paying you about six bucks a month. What is that today? Uh, five bucks a month. Five. Oh, okay, good. Actually, that's interesting. Yeah, we're doing. Uh, let's maybe say we're doing pricing tests. By the time this thing comes ah. out, I think it'll be higher. I think it'll be seven ninety nine, and then we'll also do an annual subscription for a massive discount. Tell us about the pricing tests you're running. This is always like a tricky thing that entrepreneurs try and figure out, and it's more difficult typically with the more customers you have because you have to worry about questions like how do you grandfather old customers yes. and what do you do with those cohorts? How are you handling all that? Yeah, um, it's my opinion that uh, elasticity tests, you really can't do it at our scale scientifically. And so really, I think that it's more of an art than a science. Um, mm -hmm. So what we did is we just looked at like other SaaS products that our customers are paying for and said, what are they pricing at? And Like what? Name, the, name two or three. I mean, for us, it was like a lot of the entertainment subscription types so Spotify or Hulu or Netflix or any of those, right? Um, Interesting. And so it's like, oh, man, like what are people paying? Uh, we also looked at Kilo, which is a daily workout app. It pings you in the morning and tells you what workout to do. We ping you in the morning and tell you what to wear. So it's pretty comparable. Um, and we saw closer to like that $8 mark, um, 8 to $12 mark. We don't feel like we have probably not enough value for 12 at this point. Um, so we're sticking with, I think we're doing $7.99. Um, yeah, and so really it was mostly just based on benchmarking. Um, and then uh, we're, so we're going to launch with that, grandfather all our old customers into the old one uh, or into, into their current subscription. So we're not going to hike it on the people that are already paying. Um, and if we find out that that like was a total disaster, obviously we can revert back, but that, but it's not really a test. It's more like we're going forward unless proven otherwise. Yeah, this is one of those things, uh, true or false, pricing tests never end. There's never a final answer. <laughs> Right. No. So especially in SaaS, right? There's it's a simple equation. You have new users, churned users, price per user. That is our entire business model. And you have to, as a 
product person, you have to be jumping from each of those three continually for the life of the business. Mm -hmm. So last month, what was total revenue? Um, that's a good question. He's going to do the math real quick. And hey, while you're doing that math real quick, I got to grab something to show you. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, what was it? Uh, I think it was like around 60 grand. Okay, around 60 grand. So la so are you guys declining a little bit? Last time we spoke, it was at 75, I think. Sound, that was probably in our offer. We have this weird cycle uh, because it was quarterly billing on the previous one. Okay. Um, we're fairly, we're, we're right under 900,000 ARR right now. Got it. Um, so you think maybe last time when we took that data, it, it was like annual plans included in that? Like it wasn't deferred over 12 months so you, or something like that? Billing quarterly at the time. So if you have a fat quarter three months ago, then suddenly it was coming again. Um, so we still have a bunch of legacy customers doing that. So there's some variability. Um, but we also have seen, um, last time you and I spoke, we were on a, on a web app. Um, so literally everything was done on the web, and we kind of slapped together this beta, and we were seeing a lot of growth from it. Uh, uh -huh. But 80% of our customers were actually uh, using the web app on their mobile device. Um, so we actually, in the past year, we've launched a mobile app that much more directly, uh, I guess, relates to what people expected and desired. Okay. Um, yeah. So and, and do you remember what you were doing a year ago in the same month? What we were doing from a revenue standpoint a year yeah. ago? Yeah. So now you're at 60. Do you remember what it was a year ago? Um, we had to be, because this was May. Yeah, um, we were starting to spend more on marketing, so that doesn't surprise me that we had a really big. The real question is what what's the attribution? Uh, I guess the attribution of new users versus old, right? In terms of that ratio, I think so we could have a lot of new users. Yeah, it could have been seventy grand when we spoke a, a year ago. But well, what you're saying is you could have jacked up marketing during that time, and that's what drove the growth. Definitely jacked up marketing because we were about to raise a round of funding. Got it. How much so did we were you, trying I mean, to create this? The, charge, the curve right? yeah what yeah. did you jack it up to in that month do you remember like are we talking like 20 grand on ads or 100 grand on ads or what i don't remember then um but i know that like at our peak we did 75 grand in one month in one month okay yeah. that makes sense and yeah. where are you t uh, uh in terms of capital raise last time we spoke i think you're at 1.8 have you raised more yes we raised another 1.2 on top of that so we raised okay, so about three oh. yeah three total and that last round you did what month was that um, we, I guess it was in the fall. We, we got at least term sheets by December. Um, okay. and then cash obviously comes a little bit later, but we've got all the cash now. So yeah, that's yeah. great. Okay, good. And, um, what, when you look back and you kind of sum up 2016, by the way, I want to talk about this, this stack that I just brought in on my lap. We'll talk about this in a second. Okay. Um, but, but first 2016, you remember what yeah. total sales were in 2016 or total revenue? Mm, I think it was under, I can actually, I can look at that right now. Okay. That's why he's looking that up. Uh, those of you that are only watching the audio or listening to the audio version of this, I've brought in my stack of black banana Republic t-shirts and you see a pink and some grays mixed in. Those are for my extra wild days. That's, that's crazy. Nathan, you see me in anything but black, you know, I'm feeling good, really good that day. <laughs> that's great. That's great. It's interesting. Uh, I remember the last time you and I talked through that you were really focused on metrics. I think it's interesting because I feel like at this stage, it's only watching the scoreboard during the game. The truth is, is that you're just trying your very hardest, no matter what the score is. Uh, we did 760 yeah. last year. 760 grand. Got it. And now you're on, you're on again, you're at about a 900 grand run rate right now. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. That's helpful. Um, yeah. So tell me, walk me through, like if I use the product, like I just showed you here's, this is my stack of kind of t-shirts. I literally, it's the same black banana Republic. It's, you know, it's, it's usually about 32 bucks, but I usually buy them in bulk at 40% off. So I yeah. cost me about 20 bucks per shirt. And the most that I'll ever vary is like what the, what this neckline changes. Sometimes I'll get a V sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do this. And then sometimes I do a B test. Like this is a large, but when it goes through the wash, it fits like a medium. So yep. I buy them all in large and then wear the mediums for, you know, 10, 11 wears. Um, like if I installed your app, what would I actually ha what would happen every day? Yeah. So every morning when you wake up, I'll even show you mine for today and see, there's my outfit recommendation. From oh, today. Cool. Um, yeah. and literally you can see that's what, I'm wearing That's what you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, no, the way it works is actually I'll undo it. So you can see, so essentially we recommend three outfits 
-hmm. based on the items that are in your closet, also based on the weather for today. So today's going to be high 84. So I got three recommendations, all wearing t-shirts. Um, and so it's also based on what I've worn previously. So you don't wear the same thing multiple days in a row, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so literally, it's just literally somebody recommending what items to wear. How we does have, it know uh, what's it, how does it know what's dirty or what's in the wash? Uh, we know what you've worn previously. And so there's a certain repeat factor of we're not going to repeat again. So if you make the assumption that people are doing around a weekly cycle, there won't be any problems. So it's critical that people use the app every day. Otherwise, it starts messing up your inventory. It thinks you have something that's clean that is actually dirty, but it's dirty because you didn't tell the app that it was that you used it. Um, yeah, but it, really, that's assuming that people, I mean, maybe for you, if you're wearing a lot of T-shirts, you're washing it every single time you wear. Mm -hmm. Um I think the general trend is actually toward less washing on most items at this point. Um, just in general, we're trying to focus people on quality and actually you don't have to put it through the laundry every time. Um, but yes, no, the more you use it, the better the experience for sure. And we like, how do I, how do like, for me, like the only reason I wash these things is because like when I put deodorant on, like, right. I mean, I don't, I don't smell bad, but like there'll be a light scent of deodorant on each thing. And I don't want to fold that and put it back in my closet. So I always run it on a cold wash. How are you helping people not do that? Uh, no, I think I'm saying that uh, T-shirts is probably something you want to wash every time. But for other types of items, you can wear uh, repeated times and actually be okay, right? Let's Got it. Say. Yeah. Who, who is your like your 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 av you know your weighted average user of the seventeen thousand? And is it like a business guy that's always wearing button downs or a stay at home yeah, mom or? It's a working millennial mom. So picture 31, mom. 31, 32 year old mother um, who also is like pretty high paid exec um, who literally maybe uh, when they were younger, maybe she was like more into fashion or something like that. But now she's kind of like, look, I don't have time to get really, really into this thing, but I still it's important that I present myself well. I'm imagining like what the onboarding might look like for her now. I know nothing about what a millennial mom might, or a millennial female might go through on a daily basis, but I yes. imagine they have to do a bunch of extra upfront work so that your app can work, like take pictures of the clothes and all that. What's the onboarding look like and how do you make that worth that it for is, them to do it? Dude, that is the most important question because the people have tried to do this idea before. They haven't done it SaaS. They haven't done it toward minimalism. The people have tried to do the you know stylus in your back pocket. I talked to several product managers, um, two product managers of those companies, and found that like onboarding was the biggest issue. And so um, what we've done is we we actually did um, you know the Google Ventures like sprint design process. Yep. Um, yeah, we did that, and what we found is that people don't actually care if we have literally exactly their item. So, like for instance, that shirt right there. Mm -hmm. It just looks the same, and so it's not really a big deal. So what we do is we provide a feed of all the potential items, or the most commonly occurring items in a person's wardrobe, and then all you have to do is literally just tap on the items that you own. And then yeah, but what's the initial – I have to give your app some initial signal so your algorithms can get somewhat accurate. What is the work I have to do to give you the initial signal? We provide a feed of the most commonly occurring items in a woman's wardrobe. Um, oh, and, and just so, all your whole women's cohort, and you hope that yes. there's overlap you with your new user through. closet. We get on average, like we see, we can see forty percent of a woman's uh, closet onboarded in less than two minutes. Interesting. And how many pieces of articles of clothing is that typically? Forty percent. Uh, I think average woman has one hundred and fifty. So like we can get up to like sixty, seventy. You'll get sixty to seventy. Them tapping that app sixty to seventy times with different clothing in under four kind of minutes. Like skinny blue jeans. Yeah, skinny blue jeans. You know, black jeans. Right. Like they're just tapping the items that are most commonly occurring. And we have all these users, so we know what the most commonly occurring items are. Um, we see eighty percent completion immediately through the onboarding process. And at that point, they're getting daily recommendations. So. Yeah, but like you're cutting in and out audio wise, but it sounds like you said that you're, they're getting daily recommendations about what to wear, uh, which is obviously which is obviously good. So, hey, look, I want to um, we're running short on time here. So let's uh, let's let me just wrap up with some few kind of rapid fire questions. Uh, team size today. Where are you guys at? Blake, you there? Hey, Blake, you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. We'll we'll edit I'm this here. out. Can you hear me? We'll be good. Yes. Can you hear me? OK, now. Okay. I can, but you're not syncing much visually or anything like that. It makes me think we're still on a slow connection. I wonder what happened. Yeah, I don't know. Um, can you hear me now a little better? I hear you fine. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll edit, obviously, this part out. Um, let's go ahead. What we'll do is we will uh, wrap up here with some just some quick questions. So let me pick up now. All right. Great. So, Blake, quick update me real quick. Uh, where are you guys in terms of team size? 
Yeah, uh, as of next Monday, we'll be 15. 15 people. Good. Last time we spoke, yeah. I think you were at six, so you've got doubled in size. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That, yep. that just means more expenses, though, right? We shouldn't brag too much about that until you start making lots of money, right? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. But we raised some money, and that's the thing. I have, a lot of the people that we're adding are people that are going to add money to it, which is important, right? Yeah. So people who pay for themselves. And you're still based in Cincinnati? Correct. Okay, and what are you spending now? Last time we spoke, you were spending about 17 bucks to acquire a new customer. What are you spending now? Um, I think I'd say TBD because we just okay. launched this app. Um, it was less, it was about a month ago we launched it. So we're still experimenting a good bit, but we're seeing right around that same range. Like it's around like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. And what about churn? Have you figured out how to get it below 5% month? There's it's still around the same. So that's why we launched the app. And so it's still early. I mean, first month is always a little high. And so ask me again in two or three months, and I'll let you know. But um, from an engagement standpoint, we're seeing like 60, 70% daily active engagement. Meaning so of, of the, all 17,000 people that pay you, about 60% are opening the app and using it? Um, of those who downloaded the app, 60 or 70% are using it. And so not all of them have switched over. If that makes sense, some are still using the website. How many have downloaded the app out of the 17,000? Um, I'm not... Are we talking like uh, under 5,000? Um, it's probably maybe right under 5,000 so far. We're one month in. Many of you know I am buying companies that I really, really like, and there's no quicker way for me to get to the bottom of what is happening on that website than using this tool called nathanmaka.com forward slash hot jar, H-O-T-J-A-R. It basically will give me a recording, okay? When anybody lands on the website, it'll give me a recording of where the viewer is scrolling and obviously does the basic stuff like heat maps too, but I learn so much about where the users are scrolling and clicking on my site using that tool. It helps me increase conversion rates, make more money, and grow those businesses faster. And we'll have to see what happens with those businesses, but I'm buying them. I'm buying them very quick, and I'm using nathanlaka.com forward slash hotjar for all of my website analytics. You can too. I work with them. It's totally free. You can go to nathanlaka.com forward slash hotjar. No credit card required. Again, use it as much as you want. nathanlaka.com forward slash hotjar. I'll see you there. Awesome. All right, good stuff. Blake, let's wrap up here with the famous five number one. What's your favorite business book? Oh, baby. Favorite book. Right now, um, yep. uh, Wooden on Leadership. John Wooden, a uh, former coach of UCLA Bruins in the 1960s. It's fantastic, dude. It's called Wooden on Leadership. I highly recommend it to anybody. I'll have to check it out. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Is there a CEO? Um... Yeah, I guess I was just, I just finished, or actually I'm in the middle of still reading uh, Ben Horowitz's Hard Thing About Hard Things. So I guess Ben Horowitz. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Hmm, is there a favorite online tool that I have right now? You <laughs> use a lot. What am I using right now? I still use Calendly a lot. I really like Calendly for scheduling meetings and that sort of stuff. Um, no, good, good, good. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Last night? <laughs> yeah. Uh, three, I don't know. three. Um, well, cause you just had a new, uh, a new little one, right? So you got yeah, one kid or more. Right yeah. If yeah. you guys are watching on YouTube, you'll see the office background and, and Blake's little kiddo. So how many kids total Blake? Four. Oh my gosh. And how old are you? Uh, I'm 32. Okay. Uh, and married obviously. So take us back uh, 12 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Oh, maybe. So 20 year, uh, 20 year old self. Um, I would say, I wonder if you asked me this a year ago, if I maybe said the same thing. Um, <laughs> it's, I think it's the importance of like following your curiosity um, as opposed to even the strategy or the plan, but like, like to really listen to your curiosity because that thing typically will end up in a good, good area as opposed to if you're trying to be ambitious or strategic, it actually sometimes works against your curiosity, which I think is less productive in the long run. Last time we spoke, you said, I quote, it is okay to follow your curiosity. So we have a consistency nice. on today. <laughs> Guys, there you have Blake Smith. Again, 17,000 paying customers, paying on average four, five, six ish bucks a month. Again, to help streamline your wardrobe, not sell you more clothes, not anything like that, but to help you get more use and be more efficient with your current wardrobe. They've got a team that'll be about 15 by next week, up from six. They've raised an additional $1.2 million from just a year ago when they had 1.8 raised. So they have 3 million total raised, again, based in Cincinnati, helping you streamline your wardrobe. Blake, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, man.
If you enjoyed today's episode with Blake, go back and listen to yesterday's episode with Asaf Resnick. They've raised $35 million to tell IT departments what alerts are important and which ones are noise. 